The four-stamped simple harmonic oscillator is a basic system that can be used to model much more complex systems. First, let's take a look at the base case, the simple harmonic oscillator, before moving on to the damped harmonic oscillator and the four-stamped harmonic oscillator. The simple harmonic oscillator is governed by Hooke's law, which describes a mass on a spring. In this situation, the force of the mass on the spring is equal to the negative spring constant, which describes the springiness of the spring, times the position of the mass minus the equilibrium position. The equilibrium position is the location at which the spring exerts no force on the mass. From Hooke's law, we can derive an equation for the position of the mass. The position of the mass is equal to the amplitude of the oscillations times the cosine of the natural frequency, which is the square root of k over m, the spring constant over the mass, times the time, plus a phase displacement. Notice that the amplitude and phase displacements are the result of the initial position and time. Now let's take a look at a simulation of a mass on a spring. Look in the upper left hand window. Here we have a mass on a spring confined to move in one dimension as though it were on a frictionless table. The green line denotes the equilibrium position. Now take a look in the upper right hand window. The blue curve denotes the potential energy of the mass as a function of position. The red dot shows the current position and potential energy of the mass. The green line in this window is the total energy of the mass. Note that it never changes. This is because there are no damping or driving forces. In other words, no energy ever enters or leaves the system. Now look at the gray arrow. This gray arrow represents the force of the spring on the mass. Notice that this arrow always points in the opposite direction of the position of the mass relative to the equilibrium position. Let's add damping. The damping force is in the opposite direction of the object's motion. So, multiplying a damping factor, b, times the negative velocity gives the damping force. Solving this differential equation gives an equation for the position. Based on this solution, there can be three characteristic outcomes based on the value of omega damped. If omega damped is positive, the mass spring system is underdamped. The mass oscillates around the equilibrium position as the amplitude decays until the mass is effectively at rest, at the equilibrium position. Note that the total energy decreases as the damping force takes energy out of the system. In this simulation, the gray arrow represents the damping force. Note that it's pi over 2 out of phase with the position, and thus the spring force, and that it decreases as the velocity decreases. Now let's add a sinusoidal driving force to the system. If we solve this, we wind up with the transient solution, the solution we found for damping, for this section we'll just look at the underdamped case since it's the most common, and a steady state solution resulting from the driving force. As you can see from the lower left hand graph, the transient solution quickly dies away and only the steady state solution remains. Look at the potential energy curve for this system. In this window, the yellow arrow represents the damping force and the gray arrow represents the driving force. Once again, we see that the total energy changes as the damping force takes energy out of the system. However, the driving force also adds energy to the system when it's in the direction of motion of the mass, and subtracts energy from the system when it's acting opposite the direction of motion. First, let's take a look at the top graph. This graph shows the mass's amplitude as a function of driving frequency. From this graph, there are three main conditions that the mass can oscillate at. Low frequency, resonance, and high frequency. Let's start with a small driving frequency. The driving force has a phase displacement of zero from the position. See the red dot on the middle orange graph. More interestingly, the driving frequency also has a phase displacement of negative pi over 2 from the velocity, and thus a phase displacement of pi over 2 from the damping force. See the lower yellow graph. In other words, half the time the velocity is in the direction of the driving force and adding energy to the system, and the other half it's not. But let's put this into more concrete terms. If you're pushing a child constantly on a swing with a low frequency, the child will move with the driving force you're providing. As you pull the child towards you from equilibrium, you provide a force towards you in the same direction as the child's velocity adding energy. As you guide the child back to equilibrium, you're still pulling the child towards you, even as the child's velocity tends towards equilibrium.
you're taking away energy from the system. You then start to push the child away in the direction of the child's velocity, adding energy once again. The child goes fastest at equilibrium, where your driving force is zero. You are changing directions. It has a zero velocity when your force is a maximum, because the child is turning around. Now let's look at the case where you're pushing the child really fast. The driving frequency is much higher than the natural frequency. In this case, the amplitude becomes zero. Why? Well, think of how you're pushing the child. As you push the child, the driving force is a maximum when the position is a minimum, and vice versa. Driving force and position are pi out of phase. More importantly, the velocity and the driving force are pi over 2 out of phase. Again, think of how you're pushing the child. Around the equilibrium position, when the velocity and the damping force is a maximum, the driving force, while acting in the direction of motion and adding energy, is at its smallest. At extreme positions, when the velocity is a minimum, the force is acting contrary to the direction of motion, taking energy out of the system. So the child ends up with effectively zero amplitude and very small oscillations about the equilibrium position, since the damping force dominates at low displacement and the driving force takes away energy at high displacement. Now let's look at a very special case. Look at the amplitude graph again. Notice its peak. At this frequency, a phenomenon occurs that is known as resonance, in which there is a very large amplitude response of the mass to the driving force. For low damping, the peak of the amplitude graph is very sharp. It has high quality and occurs at approximately the natural frequency. It also has a very large response. Now, position and driving force are pi over 2 out of phase. However, again, this isn't the most interesting part. Look at the velocity phase displacement and the force arrows. The velocity and the driving force are in phase. The damping and driving forces are pi out of phase. In other words, the driving force always acts in the direction of the mass's motion and thus always adds energy to the system instead of intermittently adding and subtracting energy. Note also that the total energy always remains the same. This is because the driving force is adding the same amount of energy that the damping force is taking out of the system. Again. Think of it like pushing a child on a swing. If you want to most effectively push the child, you start pushing when the child is at a maximum displacement and push through to the equilibrium position at the bottom of the child's arc. Then you start turning around, applying less force until you are turned around and can push the child the other way. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a little something about one of the most versatile models used in physics. Keep an eye out for my next video on the parametric oscillator.